Hello and welcome to this discussion. I'm going to be reviewing three sunscreens in this video. And the discussion is really a pursuit of finding the best sunscreen that works for me and also what works at what times. Yes, I do have different sunscreen for different days of the week and with reason. So let's get started. As I discuss these sunscreens, I also want to share three important points with you. One, to understand marketing and how not to get swayed by it. Two, the importance of reading ingredients. And three, the importance of understanding the ingredient interplay in a product. Basically, to understand the formulation of the product that you're going to buy. The first product that I want to discuss is La Roche-Posay's sunscreen. This sunscreen is, this sunscreen comes extremely highly recommended by dermatologists, by beauty specialists, and even its users. And it's a fabulous, fabulous sunscreen. It's fabulous because it really does its job of protecting our skin from the sun. And like I mentioned, I wanted you to understand smart marketing. If you see the ingredients of this sunscreen on the website, you'll see that the ingredients are extremely well structured. You have the actives, which basically tell you what are the ingredients in this product, which actually deliver what the product promises it, it to be. So example, if it's a sunscreen, what are the ingredients in this product that will actually give you sunscreen protection? Then it has the inactives, which basically help the product formulation, binding it together, preserving it, and making sure that all the ingredients work well together. So it's good practice to look at all the ingredients and then decide whether this is a product for you. Now, if you see this product on its website, its first claim is that it has the cell ox shield. What is the cell ox shield? It's basically smart marketing. What it is, is, is it's a combination of five ingredients. And these are avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, octocrylene, and oxybenzone. These five ingredients or actives are considered the most effective in fighting off the sun's radiation and protecting your skin. And La Roche does a fabulous job of putting that up front and center, making us really believe that this product has actually got Cellox Shield, which is its proprietary technology. But that's not a fact at all. The same ingredients are found in other sunscreens also. And so therefore, my point is that it's extremely important to read the marketing campaigns, to understand what the intent is, but to go back and do your homework, see what the ingredients are and see what each of these ingredients do to your skin. But this marketing claim doesn't take away anything from the product. It's a great product and it is wonderful. It's a great product, though I personally have a love-hate relationship with it. And the reason for that is that, yes, I love it for the protection it gives to my skin, but I hate it for the white cast that it gives to my face. So it's not a sunscreen I would use if I'm going to be doing makeup. And also, it tends to pill a lot, which means that when you apply it and you're going to be applying, going on top of it with makeup and, you know, a primer, it tends to pill and collect and become like blobs. In fact, if you're using sunglasses and you're sweating in this area, you'll find the sunscreen will kind of blob up on your nose. And not using it when I'm using, not using it when I'm doing makeup and definitely not using it if I'm going to be out for a social lunch or meeting people. I don't want to be going with blobs on my face. And it is an expensive product. It is 50 ml for 2700, which can be quite tempting to your monthly budget because the amount of quantity that you need to use of a sunscreen is quarter of a teaspoon or thereabouts. So 50 ml would last you, what, basically about 20, 25 days. So that is something, or even less actually, because you're going to be covering your neck area and ears as well and hands. So it's expensive. I am now going to be doing a test patch with La Roche-Posay to show you the white cast that it causes. So keep in mind that we use almost a quarter of a teaspoon of sunscreen. So I don't want to rub it more thinly than I usually do when I'm using the full face. But you'll see it has a white cast. And so 
So I use this only if I'm sitting at home or if I'm going out and I don't care who sees me. So then La Roche-Posay is my favorite sunscreen to go to because of the fabulous protection it gives me. The second sunscreen that I want to review is Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Neutrogena Sunscreen. It's a great product and it's hydrating. It doesn't give me as bad a white cast that La Roche-Posay does and also is great for doing makeup. And guess what? It also has all the ingredients which form the Cellox Shield. Which is to say that it has avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, octocrylene, oxybenzone and so has all the actives needed to make a great sunscreen. So the marketing doesn't really shout it out at all. However, if you go to the Neutrogena website, you'll find the ingredients are extremely well listed just like La Roche-Posay. The actives are listed separately and so are the inactives. And it's when you dive into the inactives, you find a sneaky little problem. The 21st or the 19th ingredient is a fragrance. Now, fragrances, as we know, are toxic and harmful to your skin. They cause internal inflammation and can be very, very irritating to your skin in the long run. You may not see the damage immediately, but the damage is there and is going to show up as wrinkling or irritation in the skin. The problem is that marketing has groomed us in a way that whenever we take a product, we first smell it. We want, and we almost kind of judge the goodness or the proficiency of the product by seeing how well or bad it smells. How sad is that? Really, honestly, fragrances have no place in any product formulation because they do no good to your skin. In fact, damage it. And so I'm not able to use Neutrogena on a regular everyday basis. I use it only if I'm going out and I'm going to be doing makeup because it forms a great base for makeup. It doesn't pill, it smooths on very well and doesn't show. Now, one of the critical things with sunscreen is that it doesn't show out and shouldn't be shouting out to people that, hey, I am here on my face. It is a, it's a product that needs to disappear in the background. It's not a color cosmetic to show out at all. So in that way, Neutrogena is great. And guess what? This with all the ox shield ingredient is 88 ml for some under 700 bucks how fantastic is that the only problem is the fragrance let's see uh neutrogena so i've taken it's a little runnier uh, sunscreen as compared to la roche la roche is a little more thicker and uh you know i like it because it's fluid so it kind of goes off easily and gets absorbed in the skin pretty well. Now keep in mind that we use almost a quarter spoon of the sunscreen so it's a fairly generous amount that you're going to be applying here uh, but I think I've taken a little more than I should be so I'm just going to go over a little more larger area and there we are. You give it about a minute or two and it disappears almost completely. You might find a little few patches of um, white and those just gotta smooth it out and it disappears. but it's pretty much gone. So that's a good thing. And so I use it under my makeup all the time because it just doesn't stand out and shout that, hey, this chick's got sunscreen on. It just disappears in the background. What sunscreens should do. They're not a color cosmetics and should not be shouting out their presence on your face. So the third product I'd like to review is the Teal and Terra sunscreen, which is all over social media at the moment. I was so excited for this product. When I went to its website and checked the ingredients, yes, it didn't have the ingredients listed as actives and inactives, but it had all the actives that both Neutrogena and La Roche-Posay have. Basically, it had the Cellox Shield ingredients. But what I couldn't make out from the ingredients was that it had a tint. Now, I don't understand why should my sunscreen have a tint. I don't want my sunscreen to be acting as a foundation for me because I can go to some of the best color brands and pick up a foundation which is the closest match for me. And I don't even know how I'm able to give the tint to the entire spectrum of browns that we brown girls have, 
right? So when I applied this, I found the tint to be darker than what my skin is. And also it was chalky because I have dry skin. Even though the ingredients, if you see the formulation of this product, it has a lot of hydrating ingredients as well. So I'm not sure what really went wrong there. This product though, in my opinion, would be a good match for somebody whose tint matches it closely and also has very, very oily skin. So I'm guessing the hydration and the oils would keep the sunscreen more fluid and, uh, and not as dry as it really comes on my skin. I also found it to be very expensive. This sunscreen is just 30 ml and is for 1150 bucks, which makes it almost as expensive as La Roche product and definitely much more expensive than Neutrogena, when in my opinion, both of those products are far more superior to the Teal and Terra sunscreen. Next, I'm going to be reviewing Teal and Terra's sunscreen. And uh, before we get started, I want to show you that I don't have any color on my face. It's clear. I've not used any foundation or concealer at all. So. But look what happens when it starts drying up. I try to smooth it as much as I can. This sunscreen has so much of a tint. That is almost like I'm using a foundation or a concealer. And as you see, it's dried up, but it's left this brown patch on my skin. And uh, that is disappointing because I don't know how the sunscreen is going to be able to match every brown girl's tint and skin color. It's a hard job to do. And when I rub it off a little bit, the tint is so much that it's almost like using a concealer or a foundation. It's that much of tint. I don't even use this much of foundation on a regular basis. In fact, I don't use any foundation at all, as you can see from my, you know, face. So this is like a big deal for me. My tissue is clear. It's got some oils on it, but definitely not color. So it's a big deal. So that is a bit disappointing, but uh, I'm guessing it'll work for somebody whose tint it matches and has an oily skin. I really do believe that. So if you get to try it, do let me know. And so that was a fantastic discussion for me personally, because I work from home and I spend my entire day working on my laptop. So these videos are really my moment when I'm able to connect with the outside world and something I really enjoy and I'm so passionate about. So thank you for spending the time here with me. I hope it was helpful. Please do like and subscribe. And I hope to keep catching you again and again and again and again. Ciao.